Hey, how is it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are here with my 91 Nissan Hardbody. If you're new to the channel, my name is Derek. This is my little mini truck I've been building. I got another one on the channel as well and we got all sorts of projects. But today we're going to be uh, doing something pretty fun. So essentially my truck is a naturally aspirated KA24E and this header's been on here since the 90s. Probably just came out of a catalog. I think it's a pace setter header. So I'm going to flip the camera. So what has happened is I've been driving the truck like this for quite a while. I've done a couple of small things to the engine. We've done the electric fans, the EGR delete. We deleted our uh, washer fluid reservoir. Um, <clears throat> got rid of the air duct piping just because it's cleaner. I always get questions about that. I just did a timing chain service on the truck a couple of videos ago. And we have a full just header back exhaust. So the guy that did my exhaust work originally did an amazing job. But over time, just from scraping on the ground, my header had cracked. It's a 30-year-old header. It was bound to happen at some point. But I had recently just done a mega squirt uh, ECU. And so right over here, we have our AFR gauge. It's our air fuel ratio gauge. And basically what's happening is right in the center of the four pipes, there's a little crack in the middle, which is allowing air to go through my exhaust pipe, which is telling the AFR gauge, hey, there's a lot of air coming in. Like you're getting more air. We need to dump fuel. So it's been dumping fuel, like just making the truck run way too rich. It's getting really difficult to drive essentially. And the exhaust leak is getting louder because now the pipes are starting to break. You know, it's just, it's just old. So today we're going to be installing this chrome header. Uh, I actually can't remember the company. I think it's the CA uh, header is what it was called. I need to make sure that this has the same bolt pattern and everything as the one on my truck. They specify for 4x4 only, and I think it's just because a lot of the two-wheel drives sit lower, so these might scrape, and that's why they say that on the website. Uh, we're actually going to find out, but it looks to be like it's the same length and everything else as the headers I currently run. I was curious, too, if it was 4x4 only because of the steering setup, but I believe that would be the same two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive as well, so... I don't know. We'll kind of figure it out as we go. The cool thing is right here on cylinder two is our O2 sensor. And right over here on cylinder two, it is a bung for our O2 sensor. Uh, I don't have extra spots for those. So those will just get blocked off, cut or welded. It's not a big deal. They're not very visible. Um, so basically, we're going to be throwing that in there. I was going to turbo the truck, but I'm really excited to start working on that truck. And I daily drive this. I bring it to shows all around. So I'm just really looking for reliability right now. Uh, it will get turboed in the future, but for right now, even if it's for like one or two years, I'm completely fine with sticking with NA, and I can always change it later. I mean, this can be cut and welded, but that is the big thing is that is welded all together. It is a one-piece exhaust setup all the way to the tip. So I do have to go see, um, there's a man who runs a little local exhaust shop, and he is going to most likely help me well, this onto here, I'm thinking I'm going to unbolt the header and cut it myself, put the new header on and run some sort of sleeve and drive the truck to him and just have him weld the one pipe to make all of our lives 10 times easier. Um, so unfortunately that is one downside about it being one piece. There's another pipe with a second flange that essentially could make these bolt together, but I, I like them being welded together because it'll reduce any air that could possibly get into the exhaust and make it leak and give me more issues with the ECU and so on and so forth. So I don't know. I think we got a bit of a good plan right now. I'm going to throw the header in the truck and go talk to the exhaust guy and see what he says. I do also want to say, uh, this is going to look beautiful in this engine bay. That header really kills this engine bay. I should wrap this, but I think I'm just going to leave the Chrome. I love the Chrome for now. And, um, yeah, that is also going to be a massive plus for car shows and everything else, having this nice clean header as opposed to that 30-year-old pitted, rusted header. All right, guys, so I'm actually really excited right now. I got some good news. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to take my header where it comes down into one pipe, and it just there's a straight shot right here. I'm going to cut it at the welds, and I'm going to install my new header on bolt it, bolt it in. Uh, I'm going to cut that header, like I said, at the welds. And what I'm going to do for now is just use this band clamp. And the other guy said he's going to, uh, the welder said he's just going to use some sort of a sleeve to go over it just so it's got some meat and weld it all together. And uh, 
Should be good, so see you guys on Wednesday when we uh, rip off the pipe and get the new one on. All right, guys, it's Tuesday night, and I figured I'd get a little bit of an early start. So essentially, what I'm going to be showing you guys today is we are going to take our header that's already in the truck, so I guess I'll prop this open right now. Bam. And we are going to basically unbolt our header and cut it. So this is the header we have currently. It has a leak, it needs to go, and this one's gonna look 10 times better as well. So essentially my header is welded to my exhaust and my exhaust goes all the way to the back, all custom. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this straight right here, take this uh, flange off. You can run it essentially by taking like, I think this might even be a test pipe, and you can basically have someone weld this into your exhaust and bam, right there, you have a flange. With that flange, you can bolt it up, but then you're gonna be possibly going through ex exhaust gaskets, and I don't even wanna mess with that, and I don't want any air getting through, so I'm just gonna have it straight welded so it's all one piece. So essentially what I'm gonna do is cut this straight here, right off the truck the same thing, cut it straight wherever I need to so I have enough room to have this butt up against it, and I got this band clamp I'm going to temporarily apply just so I can drive it over to the exhaust shop. That's the only job of that band clamp, and they give us a new gasket. We're going to replace that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this should be a very straightforward, simple job. Uh, I don't want to say it's so much of a how-to. I mean, I guess, maybe that's what the video will say. But it shows you pretty much how to do it. It's just so straightforward and so easy that, I don't know, maybe it'll be a whole length video. But it's really just showing you guys what headers you can run on your Nissan hard body. Just to make everybody's lives a little easier. Because I see the question asked all the time. What headers can I run on my Nissan hard body? They only say 4x4 only. And I think it's just because if you're lowered. They might hit the ground. Crack. Etc. Great. Alright. So now I'm going to pull the truck up onto here. Put the jack under there. Lift it up. And get my cutoff wheel ready. I'll probably get it. I'll probably cut it in the morning. But I'm going to unbolt this. Make sure all my bolts stay in the same place. You should replace these studs. I'm just lazy. So I'm not going to replace them right now. I, don't, I didn't buy any. And... I don't know, it should be real simple. I got the jack under it for right now because I don't want to start it without a header on there. So we got that in place. These are 12 millimeter studs. You're going to want to use a long socket. And do remember, do this when it's cold. Common sense ain't so common sometimes. So just make sure you do this not when the truck is just running. All right, it is now officially Wednesday. And I tried to get the O2 sensor off last night and it was not love and life. But I'm not going to try to take it off on the truck anymore. I am just going to simply unplug this bam it's just one wire so this is like the most simple o2 sensor ever i'll just pick up my new one in the morning come home and then drive this over but now i'm ready to have unbolted this entirely so now i'm ready to go down below and make my cuts so as you can see for the last couple of weeks i've been coming down here using a insane amount of uh this gasket maker you can see the pipe's broken here i had it welded here i mean the whole thing is just destroyed so i think i'm going to cut it right here at this line right before the weld and uh that's pretty much it then we can remove the header put the new one in make a cut and band clamp it is literally that simple well here we are now and uh that's all taken care of sweet so much space in this truck it's literally crazy but what we're gonna do now is uh i mean check that out look at the difference I am so excited to get this in my truck. I do notice a little bit of a design difference. I don't know. Let me see. Let me turn it. Yeah, I'm noticing a little bit of a design difference. Those pipes are a little bit more, they're a little longer than these are. These come straight down. I'm hoping that's not an issue for us, but we'll see. There could be a slight difference, and that's why they're 4x4 four four only. I'm hoping the new ones work good. Might even change up the sound a little bit, too, so... I don't know. We'll see how it goes down here. I have a very terrible cut. Um, I'm going to put a bigger blade on there and cut that straight now. And uh, once I do that, we're going to slap that in, measure it, take it out, cut it, and put it in with the bank clamp. So I had to go to the store and pick up some more cutoff wheels, but we've cut off that flange right there. And right over here, we've cleaned that right up. So now I'm going to slide this pipe into place and see if I have to take any more off of that. And... Oh, I'm so excited to bolt this up and clamp it. All right, so we have come across our first issue. I'm hitting right down here with just one of the O2 sensors, and I don't even I don't even have an O2 sensor that goes to this. I don't even know what the four-wheel drives do. So that so far is our only issue uh, so far. 
Um, so I have options. I can cut and weld this, or I could get real greasy about it and just relocate my throttle cable off to the side because that's pretty much all it's hitting. And then I can even just give that a couple hammer taps on the firewall, which wouldn't bother me. No one's ever going to see it. And uh, over here on the 4x4, but this is a newer truck, so it's all electronical speedo cable instead of mechanical. But yeah, it would usually go right down there. But the firewalls look the same, so I'm not too sure. So down here, you can see it looks like we're going to line up all right. I might need to trim just a little off there, but it's not a big deal. But right up here is where you can really see our issues. So I did get it a little closer by on mounting that down there. But honestly, I think I might go take an early trip over to the exhaust shop right now and see if you can just splice that and weld a patch over it essentially just so I can fit that into place. All right, we are back out here again. Second setback. So essentially, I welded up that bung and this one. Uh, Lou's Custom Exhaust did that for me. So big shout out to them. Thank you. And uh, that's who we're going to go see in the morning as well to have it all welded up. So everything's going a lot better. Um, I move the bracket off to the side. One thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hammer in this firewall just a little bit over here. Uh, I'm going to go make sure there's nothing there that's going to be uh, broken or messed with if I start hammering in there. But I think it's just sheet metal. So we're going to pound that in. And uh, then the header should fit essentially. But I understand now why it says 4x4 only. Apparently the uh, firewall on the 4x4 must be a little different for it to fit. I'm not too sure. Or actually I already know what it is. The 4x4s have a 2 inch body lift like compared to a rear wheel drive so right here i'll show you right here bam and then right over here you'll see it has this big block so that gives the header two more inches to sit it all makes sense now so it's going to be close but that's okay i'm not too worried about that all right actually i'm really happy with how this is going now so i just took this little uh hammer copper hammer i think it is and uh i just pounded that out a little bit i mean Look at that. We have so much. I guess it's a little tricky to see, but we got plenty of space now. You wouldn't even know I ever hit the firewall. And uh, it really didn't look ugly. It didn't make that massive of a difference, but it pushed it in just enough. So now we're going to come down here and see if there's anything else that we need to cut off. Or are we all set to uh, line this up and send a band clamp? So I guess I'm going to have to move this pipe up and move this over. Man, that is going to be tricky, rerouting all of that. Man another setback i see and i gotta make sure this cable isn't resting on the header that can cause a massive issue as well all right well this is disappointing so i was hoping the header would have came out in the same spot but it did not um i don't know how we're gonna get around this i don't know if the guy at the exhaust shop is gonna cut here and just make it like curve down enough just to meet up with this pipe you know we can cut this pipe back and add some uh not the end of the world i think it's something he can mess with uh, I guess I'll just get this up in place where I need to, and when I go see the exhaust guy, we'll run our pipes from there. But essentially, I mean, the header isn't bad, and it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's exactly plug and play. You gotta, you gotta do a little custom work to make it fit. It does sit out a little bit wider, and it does, I mean, I'm pretty much at the angle I need. If anything, it's gonna come out even more. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. I'll go talk to the exhaust guy, and like I said, at that point, I'm not doing any of the welding. So uh, that's why it's not so much of a how-to. But I mean, I don't know. How to install it, I guess. <laughs> hey, what is up, guys? So long story short, I'm going to cut a bunch of footage out of this video. I was a little unsure. I was trying to make this truck so I could drive it to the exhaust shop. So essentially, we've unbolted the header, bolted it in, pushed in the firewall. And uh, essentially, down below, my pipe is sitting crooked compared to the pipe that i had existing the header is a little bit different than the one i had previously the pipes are match up a little bit differently um so basically when i talked to the exhaust shop he said we're just going to make like a little bit of a z pipe and weld it all in place and i will be good to go um i tried to make this truck so i could drive it there in the morning so i could avoid having it towed just easier for everybody that is not going to happen um i tried to start it and drive it and it's just not loving life which is completely fine so i'm going to get that fixed tomorrow uh, I'm going to plug in my new O2 sensor. I'll see you guys when we get there. Okay, we did get one W so far. We got the O2 sensor in. I'm liking that. I, I probably still should re replace it, but uh, I don't know. Who knows if it even works. But um, at least it's there. At least we tried. And uh, yeah, like I said, tow truck coming in the morning. And here she goes. Here we are with the uh, Lexus truck. And we got the purple truck getting unloaded. We're going to hop inside Lou's right now. 
They are awesome, super hyped. They're just gonna help me weld in a little zigzag pipe to seal it all together with the new header. And uh, we'll be on our way. And while we're here, check this out. Got this cool, cool little K truck. It's a 660, it's a Suzuki. Love that. Yeah, there's a little Honda Del Sol right here. This is uh, an old middle school friend. His name is Josh, it's a pretty sweet little car. This is Del Sol 2. Yeah, big shout out to the boys that lose, bro. Look at that, that is beautiful. That is crazy. That's what they're here for. They killed it though, that is, that is awesome. Cannot wait to go drive this thing around like everywhere. I'm so hyped. Beautiful header, crazy. Well, all right, guys, I'll just get a quick sound clip for you so you can hear what it sounds like with the new header. Just saying, you can hear like how ticky and raspy it sounds. This is a before. Uh, it definitely sounds a little bit different on the inside of the truck. And uh, one thing to really note is make sure you hang up your speedometer cable. Uh, I tried to zip tie it on my way home because it was hitting my exhaust and uh, I thought I didn't want it to cook and I kinked it. So make sure it doesn't kink. I'm gonna, I have a new speedo cable anyway. I'm gonna reroute it down this side of the firewall. So that's gonna be in part two. But uh, it's funny enough, this actually already like cooked a bit. It got pretty hot and became gold instantly. I have a new O2 sensor coming in tomorrow. I'll replace that tomorrow. I'll make it like a how-to on a couple small things. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to change up my oil because the viscosity of the oil went down quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of fuel in the oil because with the uh, AFR gauge in there with the new ECU, it was just sucking in air and telling it to pour fuel, which is making it shoot flames. But I think I got some fuel in my oil. So uh, good preventative maintenance will change the oil to be like the third time in the last like month. But uh, whatever, all, uh, all good. And hopefully that'll be the last change and I can just go back to my regular schedule. But uh, a lot quieter in the cab, a lot less drony. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. And it does fit. It does work. It takes a little bit of custom work. You have to have someone custom weld it. Make sure you move your throttle cable, bang out the firewall a little bit, and you are good to go. So thank you so much for checking out today's video. If you want to see some more mini truck content in the future, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.